streamer. That it is. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. As a kid, I loved gathering with the family around a campfire. There was something after a long day of being long to me, of, of sitting around a campfire, toasting marshmallows, watching the flame. You know, there's something magical about this, the energy in a fire, the flame and, and all the colors. Uh, as, as kids also, we would save all of our uh, Christmas cards from the year before. And uh, back in the day, Christmas cards had lots of chemicals on them, beautiful colors, and you'd throw them in the fire and the flames would turn different colors. It was, fires were just awesome to watch and play with. And now with my grandkids home once in a while to, to put a stick up with that marvelous gift of, I don't know, white, egg white and sugar into a marshmallow and let it get toasted, hallelujah. Um, but, but we know fire is not tame, even though we controlled it in that nice little spot. Destruction of homes and lands. Fire can be untamable and uncontrollable. But fire in the Bible has some interesting understandings. Fire represents the presence of God. Here's Moses coming to the burning bush, and the bush is burning but not being consumed. And God speaks out of that burning bush to Moses to send him back to the people of Israel. And then later, Moses, after he is able to take the people of Israel out of Egypt, God leads them by day. There's a a pillar of smoke, and by night a pillar of fire leads them out of Egypt and for 40 years through the wilderness. When they finally get to Mount Sinai, the presence of God comes down the mountain like a smoky mist, like a big cloud, the Shekinah, and it comes down with lightning and fire and cloud, and it's awesome. Fire represents God's power. On Easter Sunday, Mary came to the tomb expecting her dead loved friend, Jesus. She comes to the tomb and finds angels who tell her that Jesus is risen. And for the next 40 days, Jesus meets with his disciples and friends and tells them they get to touch his physical hands where the nails went through. He eats food with them to prove that he's not a ghost. And then on ascension, 40 days after Easter, he heads into heaven. Interesting, I saw a little uh, a meme uh, this a couple weeks ago. Um, this really works best in these days after COVID. So here we have this picture of going up into heaven, and the caption is, Jesus decides to work from home. You know, he goes up into heaven to work from home. That's kind of fun, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, that makes most sense after COVID when a lot of people had to work from home. All right, but then 10 days later, 50 days after Easter, which is today, Fifty days later, the ten days later, the people of God are in an upper room, and a wind comes through. In both the language of Hebrew and the language of Greek, the word, he, the word wind and breath and spirit are all the same word, wind and breath and spirit. The wind from God, the spirit of God, the breath of God comes in and just ignites everybody in that room, the men and the women and the children that were there. It looks like tongues of fire were on their head, and they spoke in other languages that people could understand. They spoke so that everyone could hear and everyone had a tongue of flame. Everyone was touched by the grace of the Holy Spirit. Everyone was moved by the Spirit processing that gift of joy. 3,000 people were baptized that day because of the witness and the teaching of the apostles. 3,000 people. And then they were sent into the whole world with good news. And some were sent in, into all parts of the Roman Empire. And some even made it up into, into Germany and Sweden. And some and then they were taught, and they taught others, and they taught others, and some ultimately came to this country and then ended up here in Pemberville. And some of the people that we have learned from of the gospel of Jesus were taught from those who learned, who were taught from those who learned all the way back to Pentecost, the birthday of the church. Wow. Awesome. So today we get to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit. I've not seen any of you with flames on your head, right? 
Although last year, I think I did see the Sunday school kids had little paper flames. But, um, we, you know, the, the spirit coming into our midst with the burning fire is a little bit different than it was. But we talk about the same spirit who moves and breathes through the church today. This Holy Spirit is one with the Holy Trinity, one with the Father and the Son. This Holy Spirit has been God with God forever. This Holy Spirit is the one in the first chapter of Genesis, like a mother hen brooding over the waters of creation and then calling light into being. What I find so intriguing about today, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit only speaks to kings and queens and prophets and important people. But on Pentecost, he speaks to us. He comes to everyone in the room. She comes to everyone in the room. The Holy Spirit moves and breathes through all of God's people. All just plain old ordinary people have the gift of God, the breath of God, and we are washed and fed and we are grafted on to that love of Jesus. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Holy Spirit speaks through us. The Holy Spirit walks beside us like an advocate, like we need, a, like we need a, a, an attorney to go with us to trial, to speak the language, like we need a guide to go with us through the mountains or through the sea. The Holy Spirit comes to work with us and to comfort the Holy Spirit is power. Greek word for power is dynamite, right? Di di dynamite. The Holy Spirit breaks through so that we can, with power, speak of the love of Jesus to a world that needs it. And the Holy Spirit prays for us. As Paul says in Romans, sometimes all we can do in our prayer is go, oh, right? And the Holy Spirit translate those sighs too deep for words. There is a truth in the Holy Spirit, and the truth is not just about who's better, University of Michigan or Ohio State. Oh, I should have said it in the other direction, but that's okay. You know, the truth is not about the game. The truth is not about Democrat, Republican. The truth is about Jesus. The Holy Spirit speaks about the one crucified on my behalf, the one risen and present now, the one who brings forgiveness and hope and love and grace and is present in our midst. This Holy Spirit who points to Jesus has come for you, for you. Yes, for the whole world. Yes, for everyone. Yes, in all time and all place, but specifically for you so that you may know the awesomeness of the love of God so that you may know that you are part of that holy kingdom, so that that fire of the Holy Spirit burns in you with gratitude and grace and energy, so that you know that you are awesomely connected to this God of love, awesomely connected, not just to the folks who sit in these fine pews on Sunday morning, not just the folks that sit in Pemberville pews throughout the village, but not just even the folks who sit in worship in 2024, but all time, all place, all around the world. This Holy Spirit breathes and moves. And brothers and sisters, you and I have a news that the, God, that the world needs to hear. We need to con convince our world that there's something stronger than the stuff that just holds us tight, that there is something stronger, and that strongness is the love of God. Even when we mourn, even when we're broken, even when things seem to be falling apart, even when we are at odds with folks we love, in the center of all is a God who says, I love you. I don't let go. And this is who I am, and this is who I call you to be. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, because that spirit just breathes. And you and I are part of that awesomeness of God's grace. This is what the world needs to hear. That Pentecost, yep, happened about 2,000 plus years ago. That, yep, amazing things happened to the apostles and disciples. But the spirit still works and loves, and moves, and teaches, and shares, and is with you always. In the name of Jesus, amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.
Alleluia.